don't judge yourself. Have compassion on yourself. And if you are a person who has the capacity for more than your friend or your neighbor, have compassion on them. I wanted to share a few habits that have been saving my life. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a really good day. Today, I wanted to share with you just some easy things that you may be able to start implementing that might help you in what feels like a consistently chaotic life. But first, if you're new around here, hi, my name is Lydia Sin, and I make videos on frugal and simple living. We're a debt-free family of six, and I want to help you save time and save money. So if you're looking to do either one of those, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and join our community. None of these are new concepts. They're all very simple. I didn't invent any of them. Don't want this to sound like hyperbole, but they really have been life changing because sometimes it's the most simple concepts that have the biggest impact. So my first one is decide once. So I got this from listening to the Lazy Genius podcast by Kendra Adachi, and she talks about this in her book, The Lazy Genius Way, deciding once. And the number of areas in your life where you can decide one time and then continue to reap the benefits of that decision. One report I read said that the average adult makes 35,000 decisions in a single day day. So if you can take some of that mental load off yourself by just doing easy things, it's going to have a big impact. So maybe it's deciding one day a week, you give your kids cereal for breakfast. We do cereal Fridays. I know what I'm going to wear and I know what my kids are going to eat. They get cereal one day a week. It's something they look forward to and boom, it's a decision I no longer have to make. So it may be something like having a uniform. I wear dresses. I'm wearing a shirt dress today. I wear dresses and little slip shorts and leisure walking shoes almost every single day or leggings and a long top almost every single day. Let me tell you a secret, fellow dress wearers may not tell you. When you put on a dress, people think you have put so much effort into your appearance when in reality, it just feels like you're wearing pajamas. No shame in that. But on Fridays, when I would tutor, I would wear one of four maxi dresses. And I felt cool. I felt confident. Everything was covered. No bits were falling out while I was moving around tutoring. But it was a decision that I had already made. And when I woke up on Friday morning, I didn't have to pick out something to wear. Day a week, you give your kids cereal for breakfast. We do cereal Fridays. We have hot sandwiches every Wednesday. I throw meatballs or chicken breast with a little barbecue sauce or buffalo sauce in the crock pot. And then on Wednesday night, before we head out to church, my kids get a hot sandwich. It's something easy. It's something I know they like, and it's very little effort. Pair it with some carrot sticks and a little bit of fruit, and we have a full meal. Um, another thing that I talked about on Instagram recently is that I have fallen into sort of a meal planning formula that you know, one night a week we have breakfast, one night a week it's tacos, one night a week it's something from the slow cooker, we do a sheet pan night, we do that hot sandwich night, pizza night, takeout night. So I just kind of plug and play because I've already made those decisions. Maybe it's having a set day of the week where you sit down and order your groceries or one day where you sit down and you pay your bills. But having these things as a revolving thing that you don't have to think about frees up so much mental space and time. So look at those areas in your life that you can automate and make life a little bit simpler. My next concept is to relieve pressure points before you feel the pressure. So one thing that I hear a lot from moms is that they have so many birthday parties that they're invited to. It's nice to go. You don't want there to be a child in your class who no one shows up for. Realistically, you might not be able to go to every single one and that's okay. Try to go to the ones, try to go, but also don't feel guilty. I'm giving you conflicting information. I'm so sorry. But I've had that panic as a mom of what if no one shows up to this party? But one thing that we do is we pick up a pack of blank birthday cards from the Dollar Tree and a few bags. I have a friend and I love this. She went to Five Below and she bought a bunch of science kits. 
And she actually gave my son one for his birthday. And I said, this is such a great idea. And she said, and I bought as many science kits as I could. And now every time we have a birthday, I throw a science kit in there. And I think that is so smart. You could also do like a little Chick-fil-A or McDonald's gift card. Little different breaking up the norm of what a kid gets is fun and then having a few things ready to go that aren't super expensive is so helpful let's talk about habit stacking habit stacking is when you try to mix good habits that you're trying to build with things that you already do on a daily basis so i constantly forget to take my multivitamin my dentist told me to take a multivitamin I was having issues with my gum. She looked at it and said, you have a B deficiency. She told me to get on a multivitamin. I started taking it. I immediately noticed a difference, but I forget to take it. I had to stop taking it um, because I was having surgery and I just got out of the habit. But I take my nighttime skincare routine very seriously and so I've added taking my vitamin to my nighttime skincare routine while I'm letting it like absorb into my skin I go ahead and take my vitamins before I move on to the next step and I've just kind of incorporated it in there in the morning as a busy mom who works from home I will forget to do little things that I need to do to take care of myself so in the morning I will turn on the up first podcast while I brush my teeth and then I will do my vitamin C serum and my sunscreen, put on a bra, brush my hair, and those things are already done. So if I get caught up and I don't have time to like put a lot of effort into my appearance, my basic skincare is taken care of, my hair is brushed, and I can go about my day. I realized that I wanted to I wanted to read more to my toddlers and do more little learning songs with them. And so I made that part of our lunchtime routine and our bath time routine. Just adding in little things where you can makes you feel like you're accomplishing things. Not every moment of your day has to be optimized, okay? Please don't think that that's what I'm saying. But if there are things that you really want to do and you just find yourself forgetting or you think that you don't have the time, see if you can slip them into things that you're already doing. If you want to read more, it's listening to an audiobook while you clean your kitchen at night or while you go on your commute or putting some sort of e-reading app on your phone so that when you're sitting in the doctor's office or wherever it is where you usually pick up your phone, instead of scrolling social media, you're reading a book. Not everything on your to-do list has to be all or nothing. So I have this bad habit where I let my laundry just pile up on the couch because I feel like if I don't have time to fold it all right now, that it's just going to have to sit there until I do. And then one day I had a light bulb moment that just like I break up work tasks and other things, I can break up folding the laundry. So if all I have time right now is to pull all of the shirts out and put them on a hanger or just find all of the underwear for one family member and stack them up, that's getting something done. Someone has underwear for the week. All of the shirts got put away. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing experience. So if you have something on your to-do list that you're putting off because you feel like you don't have all of this time to commit to it, just find one little area that you do have time to commit to it because that makes life easier later when it's time to complete the rest of that task. Basically, this is just a watered down version of the two minute rule. If I have two minutes to do a task and a task takes two minutes, do the task. Because so many of our problems, so many of the things that overwhelm us can be solved two minutes at a time. But understand that your capacity for something may be bigger or smaller than somebody else's. My parents took my older two children camping this week. If you don't know and you're new, I have four kids. And I was standing in the shower thinking, I'm only going to have my littles this week, my one-year-old and my four-year-old. What am I going to do with all this time? And then I kind of laughed internally because I remember having a three-year-old and a four-year-old and feeling completely overwhelmed and like I had no time. But because, but adding children one at a time grew my capacity. There are things that I find completely overwhelming that other people don't. Think of it this way. If everyone standing at a table has a different size jar, but they're all given 10 ounces of water, 
Somebody who has a 16 ounce jar, their jar is not gonna be full all the way. They have capacity for more. But someone who only has an eight ounce jar, it's going to be spilling over the top. You may be in a time in your life where you only have eight ounces to give and 10 ounces that need to be filled. It's okay if some stuff spills over. Don't judge yourself. Have compassion on yourself. And if you are a person who has the capacity for more than your friend or your neighbor, have compassion on them and maybe give them a helping hand. Seatbelts on, I got a boogie. But tell me, what are some little things that you're doing that have made life easier? What are some little things that you're trying to commit to to make your life easier? Leave me a comment below and tell me thank you for being here and I'll see you soon.